Since I already talked about Bretta, one of Ramirez's subordinates, I think it's time to give trainee our potato loving dryad some spotlight as well. So in this video, I'll be going over her story as well as some of her powers and abilities and see just how powerful trainee actually is. Now there will be spoilers for her character and story so here's a spoiler warning just in case. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like the video and maybe subscribe to the channel for more Tensra content like this in the future. Now, before I talk about training herself, I wanted to first go over the dryads to understand their origins and how their race function. So basically, they were a race of long-living tree spirits that descended from the fairy races and they only exist as spiritual life forms. And like most spiritual life forms, their magic cues will eventually dissipate, so they had to merge with trees to prevent that from happening. And once they merge with a tree, it will transform into a great spirit tree, or it's also referred to as dryads. And they essentially act as the core that tethers the astral body of the dryads, allowing them to stay in the Tensra world and even travel around the areas where they choose to reside. Also, dryads mostly take on a female form and have quite similar appearances, so in order to differentiate them, you needed to read the wavelengths of their mana. Currently, the only dryads we know about are the ones residing in the Great Jura Forest, and apparently the Storm Dragon had taken them in when the Spirit Queen they served disappeared. Their job is to help Valdra take care of his domain, protect the forest from people who damages or disrespects the forest, and they are the guardians of the Treants, a group of living tree people. And because dryads have a threat level of at least rank A or higher, many regarded them as the wardens of the Great Jura Forest and are quite fearful of provoking them. They also possess several racial attributes like being able to see and hear everything that occurs in a certain area through trees and vegetation. They can even teleport anywhere within the forest simply by touching any vegetation within their domain. But not only that, they are able to acquire or share information inside the forest among members of their own race by mentally connecting to the roots of the plants that surround them. That's why when fighting against dryads, it's best to not be in the presence of trees, otherwise you might find yourself being surrounded by numerous of them. Also, dryads have the ability to summon powerful elemental spirits and form contracts with them. Then they can unify with the spirits they form a contract with, and this allows them to wield the powers of the spirits themselves. And depending on the level of the dryad, the type and power of the spirits they summon will vary. So with that out of the way, we can now talk about training yourself, to start, Trini actually used to be a fairy and her entire family had served the Spirit Queen, one of Ramirez's past incarnations. However, when Ramirez somehow got demoted from her job as the Spirit Queen and disappeared, the fallout had caused Trini and her entire family to transform into dryads. Now, it isn't exactly explained how that happened, but my theory is that they simply devolved into a lower level race. In any case, Trini and her family would wander around in their astral bodies in search of their spirit queen, and at some point in time, Valdra had taken them in, allowing the Dryas to stay in the Great Jura Forest to serve as caretakers. And when Remu first appeared in the forest after the disappearance of the Storm Dragon, Trini and her sisters have been secretly observing him from afar to determine his intentions. Eventually, when the Orc disaster led the Orcs to invade and destroy the forest, Trini and the Dryas tried to stop them but their numbers were too few. So Trini approached Rimuru and requested his help to stop the Orc disaster along with his forces and Rimuru accepted. During the battle when Rimuru and his forces were engaging the Orc army, Trini had discovered Laplace and Galmert hiding in the forest. She would face the two and after deeming their intentions to be bad, she decided to show them the divine punishment of the Dryads. She activated the spiritual summoning to call upon Sylphid, a greater wind spirit, and used the extra skill unified to integrate the wind spirit with her own spiritual body, allowing her to wield the full powers of the wind spirit. Trainee proceeded to unleash one of Sylphid's most powerful magical attacks, the Aerial Blade, and because she unified with the spirit, the attack was instant with no cast time. In a sudden burst, great blades of air started flying towards Laplace and Galmert, trapping them with a barrage of deadly air currents and eventually slicing off one of Laplace's arms. However, I wanted to clarify something. Although Trainee was considered to be powerful at this point, being at least a Calamity class individual, but in a real fight, she would actually lose to Laplace because he wasn't really fighting seriously during this encounter, and he knew that fighting in the forest where Dryas had the advantage would be troublesome. That's why he intentionally took a minor loss and retreated, but it was still an impressive feat by Trainee to pressure someone like Laplace nonetheless. Afterwards, the Orc disaster was defeated and they had decided to unite the residents of the forest under the newly formed Jura Tempest Alliance. And because of the position and authority of the Dryads, Trini had the final choice in deciding the Chancellor of their newly formed alliance and she gave the role to Rimuru Tempest. However, Trini and the other Dryads didn't really have much of a role in the alliance other than helping Rimuru monitor the surroundings for intruders, providing food or even serving as messengers. 
Later, when King Gazer arrived to remove the town to overturn his claim on the forest, Penny had appeared, and like I said, the Dryads were a highly respected race even among the dwarves, so just seeing her appearance was enough to convince King Gazer on the legitimacy of Rimuru's claims. Now, when Charybdis was resurrected by the moderate clown troop, Penny and the Dryads tried to stop the monster but they failed to contain it, so she sent her sister Triya to warn Rimuru and requested for his help yet again. During the battle, Penny was actually by Rimuru's side observing the battle, but in the anime, we don't really see her there except for later when Charybdis was defeated. Nevertheless, after Charybdis was defeated, Penny doesn't really have any significant appearances and even when the city of Tempest was attacked by the Farmer Kingdom, she along with her sisters didn't do much, but I think it was mainly because of the anti-magic barrier that prevented them from helping. At least, that's my own theory regarding the situation, but feel free to add on or correct my theory in the comment section down below. That said, when Remorous visited Tempers to warn Remuru about the upcoming Walpurgis Banquet and Demolot Clayman, Trainee and her sisters were finally reunited with their spirit queen. Now, when Remorous wanted to borrow a subordinate from Remuru to bring to the banquet, Hakuro was the only candidate available but Trainee volunteered herself, wishing to return to the service of Remorous. However, because the location of the Walpurgis Banquet is located in a special dimension and her core is tied to the Great Spirit Tree, Trainee might be unable to travel outside the forest, so using Beretta's Chaos Core as a reference, Rimuru created a new one and Trainee transferred her astral body so and all into the newly created core. The next step was for Rimuru to balance out Trainee's Holy Aura by releasing an equivalent amount of Monster Aura into the core and as the process continued, her Great Spirit Tree begins to gradually wither as the Life Force is being transferred out. Eventually, the transfer ended and the Chaos Core became Trainee's new core, meaning she cannot travel outside the forest as long as her core is with her. However, it was still inefficient so Rimuru used the leftover Great Spirit Tree that used to be Trainee's core to create a wooden door and place the Chaos Core inside. When she possessed the door, a burst of magic spread throughout the wood and after the process ended, she had now evolved into a new independent Dryad race called the Dryas Door Dryad. Trainee in her new form also has a threat level of a lower disaster class and for context, she is now stronger than the Ogg disaster but still slightly weaker than Laplace or the ex Demolog Carrion. Her power had increased as well, causing her magical count to be doubled as a result, giving her an existence value of 600,000 and she gained a resistance to both holy and demonic attacks. With that issue solved, Trainee attended Walpurgis as the official subordinate of Remorous alongside Beretta and after the banquet ended, they returned to the dwellings of the spirits. However, Remorous is such a bad influence that she managed to turn Trainee from a capable and attentive woman into an irresponsible idiot that constantly spoils Remorous. Even when Remorous wanted to move to Tempest and build her new labyrinth there, Beretta was the only sensible one while Trainee agreed to everything Remorous said without even a single shred of doubt, becoming a truly hopeless individual. Luckily, Remuru permitted Remorous to build her new home in Tempest and during the construction of the labyrinth, Trainee and Beretta provided their assistance as well. When construction finished, Penny would serve as the labyrinth manager and also as the personal assistant of Remorous while Beretta did everything else. And because Trainee is an official subordinate of Remorous, she would gain additional benefits within the labyrinth like immortality, being revived without needing a resurrection bracelet, or the ability to instantly teleport anywhere inside the labyrinth. But moving on, Trainee continued working inside the labyrinth and by the time the Eastern Empire invaded, she was initially absent and had left the labyrinth. This is because she has sensed the presence of Laplace near the forest of Blumen, so she decided to investigate and she apparently had engaged Laplace in battle and the both of them fought for 10 days straight. She managed to capture Laplace and brought him back to the labyrinth. Now don't get me wrong, although Trainee did get stronger after evolving into a Dryas Door Dryad, she still isn't exactly at the level of Laplace and might have lost to him if she wasn't careful. But at least this time, she did force Laplace to actually fight seriously as compared to their previous encounter. In any case, she would spend the duration of the war within the control room with Remus to help monitor the labyrinth. However, when the Scotch Dragon Valgren had destroyed the top 50 floors of the labyrinth, Trainee was forced to join the battle because the Phantoms had attacked the labyrinth. This group was led by the Phantom Commander Zalariel, and he was accompanied by 5 other Phantom Generals. Trainee feared that the sleeping labyrinth floors would be targeted, so she along with her sisters, the Dragon Lords and Cherise were forced to face them. Their plan was to stall for time until some of the Labyrinth Lords awakened, so Trainee started the battle by summoning the Spirit King of Wind, a top tier elemental spirit, and activated her unifying skill to inherit the power of the spirit. With the Spirit King possessing an EV of 1 million, Trainee was able to increase her EV score up to 1.6 million, but wielding such a large amount of power is dangerous and causes immense level of stress on her body, so her time was limited. 
But like I said, she's basically immortal inside the labyrinth, so she was able to fight Zelaria with all her might without having to worry about death. However, the fight isn't exactly in Trini's favor because of the racial advantages angels have over spirits, and also Zelaria possesses the same distortion field technique as Zagion, which provides the absolute defense, nullifying all kinds of attribute attacks and spatial disruptions. Even Trainee's special move Invisible Blade, a powerful wind attack that is able to cut through even dimensions was blocked by the distortion field, and despite having help from Cheris, they couldn't deal any damage on Zelario and what's worse, he was only toying with them. But before Zelario ended the battle, Adelma, Wenti and Albert had awakened from their slumber, arriving just in time to force Zelario to retreat. So with that, Zelario and the Phantoms were pushed back and the battle with the Eastern Empire ended as well. Trini later helped with the reconstruction of the labyrinth and during the war with Phantom King Feltway and the Mana Smiker, she along with Bretta stayed behind to protect Ramirez, and it's kind of disappointing we don't really know what kinds of skills Trini currently possesses, but hopefully we'll find out more about her powers and abilities in the upcoming volumes. Oh, before I end the video, if you like Trini's character, you should really check out the spin-off anime Tensura Nikki if you haven't already. Her character and personality are expanded a lot more in that series, and I personally found her scenes to be absolutely hilarious, especially the running gag of her never being invited to anything, or the one where it's implied that dryads are born from potatoes, and that Trini is a cannibal because she enjoys eating potato chips. <laughs> Anyways, that's everything I managed to gather on Trainee, the hopeless subordinate of Ramirez and Potato Cannibal. What are some of your favorite moments of Trainee and if you have any thoughts regarding a character or if I missed anything, feel free to write them in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more character breakdowns like this and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching and as always, stay safe everyone.